I went swimming last summer for the first time in years. I was so proud of how happy I felt in my new swimsuit that I took a selfie and posted it on Tumblr. The next morning, I had an anonymous message waiting for me. You have one of the worst bodies I have ever seen. You're just a giant, mushy blob. As someone who swims six days a week, seeing people like you in the pool puts me off food and makes me swim twice as much. You are truly disgusting to look at. And before you blame a medical condition of some sort, you don't get that huge without seriously overeating, so don't kid yourself. My response was something along the lines of, LOL, and yeah, I do eat a lot. Food is delicious. Food is delicious. We are going to take a trip down the left anterior descending coronary artery of a man of 58 who suddenly dropped dead from ischemic heart disease. If we go yet further down, we now get into high-grade stenosis. You can see the vessel lumen here is much reduced in size. It's reduced in size by the presence of this rather large plaque over here. And it contains a fair amount of lipid. And the lipid is beginning to get rather sort of crumbly and you can see that it's beginning to break up at that point. But because I'm supposed to be an inspiration, maybe not to the masses, but to a few, those few who have commented, emailed, messaged, told me that I inspired them to love their bodies, they're important to me. I don't want them to know that I still have days where I think my life would be better if I was skinny. I don't want them to know about those nights where I still cry because I feel disgusting. I want to be a beacon, not a disappointment. But those days do happen and the messages keep coming, so I've had to learn how to fight back. Ignore them, be flippant, turn it into an opportunity for activism. My favorite part of this lovely message is where they said, before you blame a medical condition. They have anticipated this excuse because I am not unique in being the object of their disgust. I am not special. I am the fifth, 10th, 42nd, 100th fat person at which they have spit their hatred. Fat people who, let me remind you, have done nothing more than post pictures of themselves in all their fat glory and said, hey, I look good. And don't you dare think this anonymous piece of shit is unique. Any fat person who loves themselves loudly, verbally, textually, visually, has stories of abuse, oppression, and violence to fill their own library of Alexandria, and we know how it feels to be burned to the ground. That is why being fat and standing up and saying, I don't hate myself, is a revolutionary act. Being fat and wearing bright colors and tight clothes and horizontal stripes is a revolutionary act. This is a revolutionary act. From the hardline leadership of Nikolai Ceausescu, who had gunned down his own people to stay in power, finally folded. This is a revolutionary act. After weeks of scenes like these across the country, resulting in dozens dead. It appears to be the end for Tunisia's president after 23 years in power. This is a revolutionary act. Getting big, colorful tattoos of fat mermaids on our fat thighs is a revolutionary act. Because here's the thing. Being fat is having to exist in a world that doesn't want me. Flying is one of the most nerve-wracking experiences I've ever had, not because the plane might crash, Allahu Akbar. because I might get on it and find out last minute that I can't fit in the seat, and then, oops, sorry, better scound up the money for another ticket or wave my flight goodbye. I'm going to college, working to get this education that my generation was promised would make our lives better, but you try concentrating on literary theory when the arms of your chair are digging into your thighs hard enough to bruise. Shopping with friends? Forget it. Maybe one store in a mall will carry clothes that fit me. If I'm lucky, those clothes will be something resembling cute. If I'm very lucky, one other store will carry plus sizes. Online only, of course. They can't have fatties in their store. Being fat is knowing that this man-made world isn't made for me, but I have to live in it. If anything actually does acknowledge that I exist and deserve representation, it gets accused of promoting obesity. Because there are definitely little kids out there saying, I want to be fat when I grow up, if they see a cool fat character on TV. And the fat little kids who grow into eating disorders because they never see someone like them portrayed positively in a book, in a movie, well, at least that eating disorder will make them skinny 
right? Whenever I get a crush on a guy, because we do have hearts beneath all this fat. Deposits build up on the inner walls, narrowing the tube. The heart has to work harder to pump blood through the restricted vessels. It doesn't matter how well we get along. It doesn't matter if I think he's flirting with me. I'm crippled by the voice in my head saying he's probably not into fat chicks. Of course, a lot of guys are into fat chicks. It's a fine line between someone who has the revolutionary thought that I'm attractive and being flat out fetishized. But there are some good ones out there. I get dates. But on the first date, I almost always order a salad when I want a steak and water when I want Dr. Pepper, as if that will make him think I'm one of the good fatties. You know, one of the ones who's going to lose all of that unsightly weight. You know what I hate? I hate when you lose some weight. You go to the grocery store to get yourself maybe a treat. Maybe you lost 20 pounds, 50 pounds, maybe only 5 pounds. But you're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go treat myself. So you go look at the cookies, you go look at the snack cakes, you go look at the ice cream. And you're sitting there, you're like, I ain't going to get them all. I'm going to get something. And you get one of these thin mother suckers coming up next to you looking at that stuff thinking, Oh, this is going to go to my thighs, this is going to go to my butt. I don't know if I want to get these. And they're looking at you like, do you really need that? Do you really need that? I'm like, yeah, I do need that. They don't say it. But you can tell. They're looking at you going, that's why you fat. It's like, how do you know I didn't just lose a thousand pounds? Or a pound? Or maybe I'm just hungry.
That's where we'll find Nikki McRoberts, who is obsessed with gaining weight. And she won't stop until she's 600 pounds. When I weigh myself, I'm usually pretty um, anxious. So it says 363.5, and I'm really happy about that because I gained. My goal is um, somewhere between 500 to 600 pounds. 27-year-old Nikki McRoberts calls herself the gaining goddess. In the past year, she has almost doubled her weight, and despite doctor's warnings, she wants to gain close to 250 more pounds. To reach her goal, Nikki has designed a special diet focused mainly on junk food. We've got M&Ms, chips, bits and bites, more chips. Nikki forces herself to eat nonstop. When she eats breakfast, she might eat a bag of chips before she has a bowl of cereal. And has to consume up to 14,000 calories a day. When I see how much she can consume now, it puts me in awe at times. I feel full. <laughs> Every month, I usually measure myself to see how much I've grown. Nikki hopes to one day have a seven and a half foot rear end and a six and a half foot waistline. Okay, so it looks like 22 inches. That's good because it's one inch up from last month. We're at 39 inches. What? <laughs> That's impossible. That means I lost like 20 inches in the past. Are you going from the right side? I mean, I don't know. When she hasn't gained any weight, she is kind of depressed or hard on herself. And you know, that's when I come in, I'm supportive. And it's like, it's OK, honey. To guarantee that she keeps packing on the pounds, Nikki drinks a 3,500 calorie shake twice a day. I use these shakes to add extra calories to my daily intake. Shakes usually are made up of 35% cream, 18% cream, chocolate syrup, and they do taste really delicious. I could drink them every day, but I don't. I usually drink it before bed because that's usually when, you know, you're the least active. This year alone, Nikki has spent $5,000 on new clothing because every month she outgrows her wardrobe. I like to dress a little bit more provocatively and sexy because that's how I feel. The heavier Nikki gets, the skimpier her clothing. There are thin girls that won't wear the clothing that she does. This is my very first bikini I just bought this year. A white bikini. <laughs> As you can see, it's very sexy. my new body, I feel extremely beautiful, sexy. I feel more confident. I feel like I'm becoming a woman. Here's the 600 pounds, baby. At the rate she's going, Nikki will reach her goal of 600 pounds in just